I call the fourth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. I'd ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Move, move that the minutes be approved as read and enter this so on the record. Second. Okay. No. There's a motion to, to approve and second under discussion. Not all those in favor state aye. On the, on the minutes? I'm sorry, do you want to go back to this? Want to do it now? Or yeah. Okay. We'll take that back. Uh, we're going to take a, a roll call in the minutes. Bonin? Here. Deber? Here. Eber? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Rob? Uh, <laughs> Excuse. Thank you. Kittleson. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Sigali. Here. Stefan. Here. Susha. Here. Van Akron. Here. And Vanderweel. Here. Fifteen present. Quorum's present. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. We have Boy Scout Troop 872. Please join us. You can step down a little bit if you like. Okay. Just a little bit. Just a there little bit. There you go. Okay. Oh, so, attention. Oh. Um, attention. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Thank you. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Uh, are Attorney McLean. We were still brought in at the last, last regular council meeting. Uh, I spent the following appointment for your consideration. Scott Lemondowski to be considered for appointment to the historic preservation commission to fill the unexpired term of Robert Ecker, whose term expires 4-30-06, signed by the mayor. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Thank you, Your Honor. Move to approve the uh, um, committee appointments as committee appointment. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. City attorney's presentation uh, regarding open meetings and quorums. Attorney McLean. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> I was asked to give a brief presentation regarding uh, a little bit about the open meeting law and issue with respect to uh, quorums, uh, negative quorums, walking quorums. Uh, about, I'll spend as little or as long as the council would like or can, uh, can stand. Uh, Perhaps we can do this in short segments throughout the council year, uh, do a little bit on different subjects that may be of interest <laughs> to uh, various members of the council. Uh, I guess with respect to the open meeting law, just briefly, there's some uh, key elements. The, the declaration of policy under the statute, I think, gives the flavor for what the open meeting law is all about. Uh, I'll read that. It's in recognition of the fact that a representative government of the American type is dependent upon an informed electorate. It's declared to be the policy of the state that the public is entitled to the fullest and most complete information regarding the affairs of government as is compatible with the conduct of government business. To implement and ensure the public policy herein expressed, all meetings of all state and local governmental bodies shall be publicly held in places reasonably accessible to members of the public and shall be open to all citizens at all times 
unless otherwise expressly provided by law. So that's the declaration of policy under the open record law, uh, open meeting law, and public record law. It's really, uh, the, it's to be liberally construed in favor of open meetings and access to, by the public to governmental affairs. Uh, some key definitions, one is uh, uh, what's a governmental body? Obviously the council, uh, its committees, uh, boards, commissions, uh, authorities are all governmental bodies subject to the open record, uh, open meeting law. Uh, citizen advisory bodies that are established by the council are also subject to the open meeting law. Um, so that's governmental body basically. So it includes subunits of the governmental body. All your committees are also bound by the open meeting law. Uh, and then what is a meeting? And why this is important is that it really uh, shapes what uh, you have to do and what you don't have to do. Uh, but go back, as far as governmental body, for instance, a department head meeting uh, had one this morning, is not subject to the open meeting law because it's not a meeting of a governmental body or subunit. <coughs> it's staff members, basically. It's, uh, so that's first criteria. Then a meeting is the convening of members of the governmental body for the purpose of exercising the responsibilities, authority, powers, or duties delegated to or vested in the body. And what triggers the application of the open meeting law? It applies whenever a gathering of members of a governmental body satisfies two requirements. There's a purpose to engage in governmental business, and two, the number of members present is sufficient to determine the governmental body's course of action. Now why that is important is generally, uh, you've got a purpose test, uh, and the statute specifically excludes uh, chance gatherings or social gatherings that aren't, uh, held for the purpose of uh, governmental business. But there's a purpose test, and that includes discussion, decisions, or information gathering is all part of uh, purpose of engaging in governmental business. Then as far as the numbers go, the numbers present sufficient to determine the governmental body's course of action, you have to determine for each particular item that you may be discussing whether or not it's your typical majority vote in which if you have a quorum, which is you know, enough to pass the action, that would be uh, uh, nine, basically. Uh, you have a meeting of nine aldermen. Generally, the presumption is that that's an open meeting. And unless you can rebut that presumption, you're obligated to provide notice of that meeting and uh, and you can't discuss things in closed session unless you have a proper basis for doing so and it's noted on the agenda. Uh, but there are decisions of the governmental body that require say a two-thirds vote and that's typically most often in uh, situations where you have a budget alteration is an issue where you're transferring money from one account to another. That would require a two-thirds vote, and then one-third could block that action. If you convene, if you've got, so two-thirds is 11 aldermen, because you always round up to the next whole number. Uh, so that leaves uh, five that could vote the other way and still pass, so you'd need six members of the governmental body meeting if it involved an issue that required a two-thirds vote that would constitute, uh, that, that would require a notice of a, of a meeting. So you couldn't convene uh, with six aldermen if that was a subject matter that was requiring a two-thirds vote. Uh, and committees, generally, most committee issues are not two-thirds vote issues, they're all majorities. But let's say you have a five-member standing committee. If you've got uh, three members, that's a quorum. 
So if you've got, anytime you've got three aldermen from the same committee getting together, that raises a red flag, is this an open meeting for purposes of the open meeting law? Generally, if they're from different committees, you could have three members uh, gather together and discuss governmental business without it being a meeting. Um, but you've got to be careful. Uh, you've got even some smaller committees, the building use committee, you've got three people. Risk management, you've got three people. So two people could constitute a quorum for purposes of that discussion, and theoretically, that's going to trigger the open meeting law. So. Uh, you got to be thinking in those terms as to whether, uh, if you happen to be discussing something with another alderman, is this triggering the open meeting law? Uh, and it's particularly tricky, again, with the negative quorum situations, and that's what I was talking about, where there's enough members discussing <coughs> the issue that could block the uh, outcome of the, uh, of the action. Um, As far as uh, the, there's one procedural difference, as far as the burden of proof, as I said, if you have half of the body or, or more meeting, it's presumed to be subject to the open meeting law and required notice. Uh, that presumption can be overcome and rebutted, but the burden would be on the city to establish that it, it wasn't subject to the open meeting law. Whereas on a negative quorum situation where it's, uh, uh, as I indicated, say six aldermen together that could block a vote and someone were to challenge that meeting as, as being an illegal meeting, it would be incumbent upon that individual that's challenging it to, uh, would have the burden of proof to show it was an illegal meeting. Um, special situations that trigger uh, the open meeting law, uh, one is what's called a walking quorum. And that's where in order to avoid uh, an open meeting law violation where you don't have, instead of having eight or nine aldermen together in a room, uh, two or three meet to discuss an issue. And then two or three others meet to discuss that same issue. Two or three others meet to discuss that same issue. And then, then one person from each of those three groups gets together and kind of discusses, well, what was the, you know, what's everybody thinking, basically. Uh, that sort of thing could trigger a violation of the open meeting law because uh, you've, you're basically taking the same subject matter that you're discussing instead of actively joining together and discussing it, you're doing it in a way that uh, still sufficient to reach a quorum without noticing it as a meeting. Um, and it, it, particularly if you're doing that for the purpose of trying to avoid the open meeting law. Um, there are issues with uh, email that get very difficult and What's unfortunate is there really aren't any cases throughout the state on it, and there's not much guidance from the Attorney General on this. Uh, I would commend all of you to this publication. Maybe you've got it, maybe you don't. Uh, this is true for the public as well. Wisconsin Open Meeting Law, a compliance guide. It was last put out in 2003 by the uh, Attorney General's office. It's on the internet. Uh, it's at www.doj.state.wi.us. Then you follow the, the links there for, for uh, open meetings and public records. There's one of these compliance guides for open meeting law, and there's also one on the public records law. Uh, basically, every, everything I'm talking about this evening is contained in here, plus there's additional appendices and some things also that we're not going to talk about because of a lack of time. Um, but open meetings, when you get to uh, emailing, uh, the, the only advice that's contained in this uh, 
guide and the only thing that the Attorney General has put out uh, is that recommend against using email for the purposes of uh, group discussions of aldermen uh, on issues that are coming before you. Um, it recognizes that you know, the Attorney General recognizes that emails got a lot more popular and and it's pretty easy, but you can get yourself in the same situation. And basically, you're having the same conversation as though you were in a room uh, in a lot of cases where it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing or you send an email to 15 of your colleagues, you get you know, the other 15 are sending emails to the other 15 and everybody is talking about the same subject at pretty much the same time and, and sort of determining the outcome of uh, an issue without discussing it, you know, in a public forum and open session. Um, you know, the, the Attorney General's approach is just recommend not use email that, that, that for those sorts of purposes. Uh, it's easy to say, it's pretty hard to do because email is so convenient. But you've got to be careful on that. As I say, there aren't any cases out there and there's not really much guidance. Um, where there, there's still not cases on it either in the public records context, but you're going to see cases on that sooner than you will on open meeting law issues. Uh, I know there's going to be cases coming down uh, soon dealing with whether or not, you know, the the requirement to retain your emails as public records. And that's a whole other subject that is going to, you know, uh, require another bit of discussion. Um, the factors, in one uh, Attorney General's opinion that uh, Jim Doyle had issued back in 2000, he said, uh, you know, there wasn't any current Wisconsin cases interpreting that use, but some factors to consider are the number of participants involved in the communication, the number of communications regarding the subject, a time frame within which the electronic communications occurred, and the extent of the conversation, like interactions reflected in the communications. Uh, so those would be factors the court would look at, and the, the closer in time, uh, the more numerous, the more number of uh, people discussing that, the more likely uh, a court could find that that constituted a meeting for purposes of the open meeting law. Um, there is there's a 2001 Court of Appeals decision out in Washington State that uh, dealt uh, slightly with this issue and uh, that case held that emails exchanges could constitute a meeting triggering the open meeting law if a quorum participated and it was used to conduct the official business of the governmental body, but that mere use or passive receipt of email wouldn't in and of itself constitute a meeting. Um, these are more, rather than you know, hard, hard and fast answers, they're more food for thought for you, uh, you know, when you're using email, when you're on the phone with your colleagues, uh, when you're uh, meeting together sort of on an informal basis, if you will. Um, I think that's really about all I uh, was prepared to cover tonight. If you want to go into more depth or talk about anything else, if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to try to entertain them. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Attorney McLean, for that, that really comprehensive overview. I noticed that the April issue of the Municipality Journal also dove into the subject a little bit. And I have a question in regards to some of the emails and phone calls I've been receiving from private citizens. You know, oftentimes they want to know where you stand on an issue or how you're going to vote on an issue. And if these private citizens are calling all 16 of them, would that be constituting a walking quorum? Should we avoid answering those types of questions about where we stand? Or can a private citizen not... Uh, create a walking forum? Um, I guess I would advise that if, 
if you're responding to a constituent's you know, request as to where you stand, I don't think that that would trigger an open meeting law situation unless you're pretty sure it's being done or, or you're sort of actively engaging in it strictly to avoid the open meeting law. I don't think you can prevent a constituent from asking all the aldermen various questions. And, but, but if you're copying in all the other aldermen in your response and then they're, they're asking the same question to all the other aldermen and all the other aldermen are copying you in on the response so everybody knows what everybody's position is, that, that could trigger an open meeting issue, I think. But just responding to a constituent, I would say, no, you know, the presumption there would be that that would not trigger the open meeting law. Uh, I should say, I guess the, the follow-up is, uh, you know, all right, so you've got an open meeting. What are the requirements as far as notice? Uh, you've got to notice the meeting. The, the law says you've got to notice it within 24 hours prior, or at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. There are exceptions to that in case of, I, th I think the language is uh, for good cause, that you can justify uh, some shorter notice, uh, but not anything shorter than two hours notice. Uh, you have to have pretty good cause, though, to shorten it down even to two hours. But in no event really could you really shorten the notice down any, any less than that. Um, the, uh, the notice has to be made available to the, uh, the public, and generally that's done through posting and also uh, you know, putting out on the bulletin board. Uh, I think we also put all the notices on the uh, city website. Uh, we were required to provide it to the news media, if the news media have made a request to receive all the notices, and I, I think WHBL and the Sheboygan Press, I believe, have done that. I think we provide it to them routinely. I don't know about any other radio stations. Uh, you know, Sue? Um, on the, I, think, I think possibly we have one other radio station, but the press and the but basically, uh, if the news media has requested notices, you've got to provide the notices to the news media. Uh, they don't have to publish them, like in the Sheboygan Press. That, uh, they're not required to publish all the notices of all the meetings uh, unless we want to pay separate to, uh, to buy an ad, but we're not obligated to do that either. We just have to provide the notice to the news media and they can do with it as they wish. Uh, one other situation that's come up, uh, I got a e series of emails from this municipal attorney's uh, email uh, group came up recently dealing with meetings, and that was multiple meetings where you've got, say, a committee meeting, uh, say a finance committee, and you know at the finance committee that it, it's a real hot topic and you're going to get nine aldermen there. You're going to have a, a quorum of the council, and you know it ahead of time, or you're pretty darn sure that you will. Uh, in that case, you, you need to notice up not only the finance committee meeting, but you're going to have to notice up a council meeting for the purposes of information gathering. It's called, uh, it's named after the case that discussed it, the uh, bad key notice. Um, it comes up sometimes where you've got a subunit like a committee and you've got a whole bunch of aldermen coming to that meeting. It also applies where you've got, uh, say, a, a county meeting, a county board meeting, or some county committee meeting, and uh, you have, uh, you know you're going to have some issue with the county, say, and uh, <coughs> an all, a, a quorum of the council is going to be meeting just to sit in on the county board meeting, not to take any action or do anything, but just to hear what the discussion is. If you know that in advance, uh, one of these bad key notices needs to go out. And basically all that's doing is just advising the public that you're meeting, not to take any action or anything like that, but just for the purposes of information gathering. Because 
under the case law, just for purposes of information gathering, is enough to constitute uh, the you know purpose test for a meeting. Uh, okay. Yeah. The open meetings law, I guess the question is almost begging to be asked, does that preclude aldermen from socializing either by chance or planned? Um, so long as no business is discussed. Chance or, or social gatherings are not deemed to be meetings. But you can't say, you know, having a chance or, or a social gathering and then start talking shop. Uh, you've got to avoid Discuss, discussing issues that are, you know, issues that could be decided by the council. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't want to get too carried away with this, but I know one issue that kind of affected the last council that maybe you want to go into is the ability of perhaps me, if I would say to the public works chairman, I'd like to be at your next meeting. I have an issue to discuss. And if it's not relevant to anything near discussion, you know, I have to be on the agenda and it has to say what I'm going to speak about. You know, in the past they said department heads or aldermen were like, just it would say, you know, comments and it wouldn't say who it was from or what they were discussing about. And I believe in that same document from Attorney General Lautenschlager, she kind of clarified that a lot of cities were kind of getting close to the line on that, that if a public official or department head was going to comment on something that wasn't on the agenda, it should be on the agenda and what they were going to discuss. Right. That gets to the issue of like having uh, on your agenda just some general comments or uh, other matters, you know, just blank period and bring in all kinds of other stuff uh, because you get some people on your committee that like to gossip or whatever and uh, you, know, you start bringing up all sorts of issues. Really, uh, you know, if you know in advance that you're going to be discussing an item, it's preferable on your meeting agendas to uh, put some uh, item with respect to that topic. The, the counter to that is there's, there's a case not too long ago dealing with uh, it was basically an equivalent to a law and licensing committee that, uh, well, it may have even been a council meeting, but there was something on the agenda that just said licenses. And some individual's liquor license was discussed at the meeting, and they, they brought an open meeting law challenge to that. The court there, I think it was Court of Appeals, said uh, that just putting licenses on there was sufficient for purposes of the open meeting law. So, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to say how general you can really be. I think that was stretching it on the court's part. The, uh, I think the attorney general is taking a harder line on those sorts of things and uh, recommending that to the extent you can be specific on your agendas that you do so. Okay, any other questions? Not moving along. Public, thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, public forum, Sue? Um, first on the list is Carl Table. <coughs> Carl, can you give me your home address, please? Gladly, Sue. Uh, 2402 North 25th. And you will have five minutes. Um, in, in courtesy to that comment about five minutes, I would like to ask my members of the district, uh, Alderman Meyer and Stefan, that if when I'm at five minutes, I would appreciate the courtesy if I could continue as a former member, and I do not come very often. Your Honor, Mayor Perez, uh, Clerk Richards, members of the council, uh, to those of you who were elected to your new offices recently, or re-elected a special congratulations. Last week, or the last council meeting, the entire city was watching. And I would like to personally compliment the 11 of you who stood firm for green space and to save Sheridan Park. I remember when I was a member of the council, the issue came up from the planning department regarding uh, 2010 plans. And it would have been very easily to put a uh, Taylor uh, Road right through Maywood and Evergreen Park. And the council, together, we worked. And we said, yes, you can have a Taylor uh, Drive extension, but put it to the west side of the park, not through. And so I want to commend you people in your deliberations last week. 
And um, also a special compliment to Dennis Bauman. I could see, Dennis, your agony in your very difficult decision. Uh, your viewing public appreciated your sincerity. And also, I want to compliment your fine work with our sister city and wish you God's blessing in your trip to Japan. Tonight, several of you will receive an envelope that either Vicki or Bill will uh, pass out, elaborating the issues that I bring this evening to your respective committees. Um, Mayor Perez, you have done an exemplary job as president of the Sheboygan School Board. And Dr. Longo and Joe Sheen and other superintendents have promoted team building. And I had the chance to participate in those team building programs. And just as you read in the newspapers where in Washington, once in a while, the Democrats and the Republicans leave town and they go to a retreat. I think the citizens of Sheboygan wouldn't mind if Mayor Perez and the department heads and you members of the council went on a retreat, and particularly like a ropes course out at Waikota to build unity on behalf of our wonderful city. We have a wonderful city to live in, to work in, to shop in, and to go to school. Uh, Mrs. Richards and Mrs. Hart, I would appreciate seeing there is there isn't any um, the city newsletter anymore, uh, that on Channel 8, you would list the members of the council with their phone numbers, together with the department heads and their phone numbers. And then at times, Sue and Mayor uh, Perez, occasionally during the deliberations, would you explain for the viewing public the terminology? The public loves watching you but they would like to know what does it mean to referral, uh, refer, or file, or why is something laid over. Uh, may, make it a more classroom for the public who is paying the bill and wants, is proud of all of you people, but they want to know what's taking place. Now to my aldermen, uh, Meyer and Stefan, uh, I'm going to ask you to bring in a change to this council. And first of all, instead of having only five people come to public forum, I'd like you to expand that at least to 12 and eliminate the five minutes. I watch counsel at home. Time's up. No. If people have things to say, the taxpaying public comes here to you, their elected officials, give them that chance. And when you vote on this issue, don't hide it in the consent agenda. I'd like a roll call saying you're for this, that the public uh, can be, uh, uh, the numbers can be expanded, and also uh, the uh, time limit being dismissed. When in the past, I'll use uh, Alderman Van Acken example. Let's say he received a letter from a constituent. He had the privilege to stand up and say, Your Honor, I have this letter, letter from Mr. Joe Smith. And he would like a stop sign on 4th and Huron or whatever. That was taken away. And I would like you members of the council to restore that, that the public sees that if I have an issue, that Vicki Meyer or Bill Steffen say, Carl Tapel brings this issue in, and then refer it to the committee. Uh, uh, please, please do that. Please change it, and you'll bring your government closer to the people. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me? The five minutes are up. Okay. May I continue, please? Alderman Meyer. Could I make a motion that Dr. Tapel be allowed to continue? There's a motion. Is there a second? second. Motion and second. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? No. We'll, roll, we'll, take, we'll take a roll call. <clears throat> and I vote would allow uh, Dr. Tapel to continue. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, I'm sorry, Graf's not here. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Racky, Sagali, Stefan, no. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Van, Vanderweel. 13 eyes, two motion, no's. Motion carries. Please continue. Uh, uh, thank you, members of the council, for your courtesy. And I would like you to do that for all your other citizens that come here. Um, Mr. Manning, for your committee, I'm going to ask 
that you would bring in legislation that when there is a vacancy, that there can be an election. Example, there was a vacancy when Alderman Perez was elected mayor. There was a vacancy here and on the school board. And I think it is good if the public would elect the people, not the council or the school board. And some people are gonna say, well, that's expensive. Folks, that's what America is, is elections. Uh, Senator Lipem and Assemblyman Van Akron are aware of the interest that I have in this issue, and I'd appreciate it as a council if you'd ask them to put that on the fast track, that if there are further vacancies, either through a death or a resignation, there can be an election, and the people can go house to house, as many of you did, to seek their support. To Alderman Bauman, I'm gonna bring back an issue that I was not able to get through, but I was hidden in the consent agenda, and I should have asked for a roll call, and I didn't. And that is, uh, for future consideration, I would like that uh, we would have um, ordinances that would, uh, for future people, uh, have the mayor's office be elected to two four-year terms, and members of the council to five two-year terms. And again, that wouldn't affect you, but future uh, council members. To Alderman Berg, um, an issue is, throughout our city is uh, the department terms or their contracts. The mayor was elected for four years. You were elected for two. But I'm sure that there are some new people on the council that are not aware that the city gives five-year appointments to department heads. And I think that's time to change that ordinance to make it to a two-year term, and also possibly it could be coincided with the mayor's election, that it be at the uh, grace of the mayor whether the people continue in their respective positions or not. Uh, Alderman Susha, uh, in public protection and safety, I support a new police station I have all along the way, but the new building should be downtown. When I'm in the area of this wonderful downtown, I see the officers constantly going between City Hall and the courthouse. I don't want them driving from 23rd Street or other places. The police department belongs downtown. Take that parking lot that some would be willing to give away and put a beautiful building there or attach it to the courthouse. We talk about joint services. Let, let's bring it together. Alderman Graf isn't here this evening, but for his committee in finance, I'm asking as a citizen that we repeal the stormwater tax, some call it a fee, and, but, but eliminate it through a four-year process. Through a four-year process. And to Alderman uh, Montmere, um, if in your com uh, committee the whole, um, some time ago I asked for an inventory of how many vehicles our city owns. And from the city clerk's office, my reply was it was filed. Now I ask a simple question, friends. How many cars does our city own? Where did I get the idea from? Governor Doyle said, you know, how many cars do we have and can we eliminate some? Mayor Barrett in Milwaukee is saying, how many do we have? And I can't say tonight, yes, you maybe could eliminate some. Maybe each department can, looks, uh, looks, can look very closely at the issue. But I have a concern and that is I would like, and I don't know for sure, but I would like it checked out if any of those vehicles leave our city at night, because I don't think they should. I'd like to compliment the city attorney for his deliberations on open meetings. I know in the past when Walder, Alderman Wongerman and I served, we tried to be the watchdog. Don't have an open, I mean a closed meeting unless absolutely legally that you have to have. And last but not least, it's going to be budget time in the near future. And so, Mayor Perez and members of the council, if you'd like me to come back, I'm glad to come back with ideas. Where did I gain these ideas? 10 years of teaching, 25 years as a principal, six years working on, in this fine city council. And I share ideas where we can merge some of the departments and um, make Sheboygan that place that we all want to say, mention our name in Sheboygan. Thank you, and I also want to thank especially the people who gave me the time to continue beyond the five minutes. Thank you. 
Uh, next on the list is Anthony Bonet. Anthony, can you give me your home address, please? Hi, yes. Hi, Anthony Bonet at 2906 North 6th Street. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Common Council, for having me here. Thank you for the public for listening. Um, I'm here to speak on your, on your documents tonight, 3-37, uh, which is General Ordinance uh, number 2-0506. And for the public at home, this is an ordinance that would repeal the municipal code for the establish the Efficient Regional Government Opportunities Commission. This is something I think is critical for all of us because we are all taxpayers. To inform the aldermen for the ones that were here before and for the new aldermen, I, I, would, I will quickly read through the original ordinance which this would repeal, actually resolution which this would repeal. Uh, this is a resolution authorizing the appointment of a commission to examine, promote, and expand, an expansion of intergovernmental cooperation for the purpose of stabilizing local taxes rates while promoting a higher standard of living and economic development. Now for, there be it resolved, the Efficient Regional Government Opportunities, or ERGO Commission, is, is hereby established whose responsibility it will be through the further development of intergovernmental relations to assist in the cooperation of plans, policies, and programs to address and resolve issues of mutual interest, the Commission will report progress to the Common Council monthly. Be it through resolved, the Efficient Regional Government Opportunities Commission shall consist of eight City of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County residents appointed by the Mayor. The Commission will be composed of local business, labor, government representatives from the committee along with a non-voting representative from the Mayor's office. I guess the critical point here is this was a commission that we, that we in the city and through our representation has established. It was endorsed by the school district. It was endorsed by the county. It was endorsed by labor. It was endorsed by the business community. Many people in the business community saw this as an innovative model. They saw it as something that had it brought promise not only to our community but being a beacon to other communities. I see as something that was also endorsed actually by our Mayor Perez on February 23rd. You know, having insight and looking in that we need to set models for where we're going to go and how we're going to save tax dollars and work together between the Sheboygan County, the school district, the city, and the school, and the county needs to be addressed. And I don't think we should be looking in a fashion that won't expand on these areas. In the past, we've had a shared service commission with the, with the county, only with the county, not expanding into any other areas, including the school district or any of the townships around us. Nor have we ever had any model which would ever expand or be able to attribute how much we saved any shared service we ever had. This model here would do that. I implore you to, to consider tonight your vote when looking at this and vote not to repeal this commission. Here's an opportunity to be true leaders in the, in the area of shared services. All our partners, including our mayor, have seen this as a model that they would not endorse through their votes or through appointing officials to this commission. Please consider this when you look at this. I very much appreciate your time, and God bless Sheboygan. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is Scott Lewandowski. Scott, would you please give me your home address? Okay, 2201 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Okay. I want to thank the members of Common Council that voted to save Sheridan Park last week. I'm sure that each one of you on the Common Council and also Mayor Perez have heard your share of complaints from the people of Sheboygan. And I'm sure that when you ask what should be done, many times you get the answer of, I don't know, or that's your job. I'm here tonight to offer some ideas on what to do about the problems around Sheridan Park that made some people in the area support the idea of destroying the park. But these problems don't only affect the people in the Sheridan Park area, but every person in Sheboygan. And we must all work together to reduce these problems. I have come up with some ideas, and they will take more than five minutes, so I hope you will listen and vote to allow me to speak longer. My first idea is the one that we can probably start with the earliest. This idea is to have the police park in the area of Sheridan Park instead of empty parking lots. Show more of a police presence. I know that the police are parked in the areas because they are working on their reports. 
and by doing their reports in this way, they are still in the area they are assigned to patrol, and there is not enough room in the small police station they currently have. Idea number two is to get more police officers to live in these areas. Studies have shown, including in Milwaukee, that the crime rate goes down when police officers live in a neighborhood. To go along with this, I feel the city should require all newly hired police officers to live in the city of Sheboygan. We currently have around 24% of the Sheboygan police officers living outside the city of Sheboygan. Idea number three is to look closely if we need to add more police officers. Can we afford this? The question should be, can we afford not to do it? A few years ago, we had problems along the lakefront between North Point and Michigan Avenue. One of the things the city did was install surveillance cameras, and it helped to reduce the problem. Let's install surveillance cameras in problem areas as idea number four. For drug dealers, they keep a lookout in order to know when the police are in the area. Cameras make it much harder to avoid being watched. Also, it's important to call the police when you see illegal activity in your neighborhood, but why not grab your video camera and film from inside your home? You won't be seen, and if you don't want the police to come to your house, you could drop the videotape off at police headquarters and give the police more evidence to work with towards getting rid of the problem. Ideas number five is about some of these problems occurring in the park at night. Let's put motion detector lights in the park. When the lights go on, the people doing the illegal activity aren't going to want to be seen. Idea number six is let's go back to the special Friday garbage pickups. These were eliminated because of the cost. How much more is it costing the city now with illegal dumping around Sheridan Park and other parts of the city, which in some cases the city winds up cleaning up themselves and or paying for. Some of these people in the Sheridan Park area cannot afford to pay to have the garbage hauled away or they don't have a car to take the garbage to the recycling sites. Another idea along this line is something the city did 100 years ago. Sheboygan would have community cleanup days on certain days for certain neighborhoods. The city would have wagons in these parts of the city and people could clean their yard or house and take their garbage immediately to the wagons for disposal. Why not do this now with some recycling trucks in the neighborhood and some regular garbage trucks on certain days and let the people get rid of their trash as they clean their yards right away? Another additional idea we could try at the same time is to have various community groups help clean up the neighborhoods on these days. We could get Boy Scouts or school groups to help clean up yards and homes and carry this trash to the trucks right away. This could help people who don't have the money, time, or physical ability, such as the elderly, to do the job themselves. We might even be able to get some of the people who have been sentenced to perform a certain number of community service hours to work on these days. This would help clean up the Sheridan Park neighborhood and other areas of the city. By yards, I also mean porches of homes. When I was running for alderman and I was going around handing out brochures and ringing doorbells, I saw many, many porches used as garbage dumps with everything possible on these porches, including old kitchen sinks, toilets, and car tires. But these garbage dumps cannot be seen from the street due to porch railings. This garbage needs to be cleaned up and as soon as possible in the in order to restore more pride in neighborhoods. Excuse me, Scott, five minutes are up. I would like to ask for more time. Alderman Susha. Thank you, I move to allow him to finish. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no. Please continue. Okay, thank you. When someone lives next door to one of these dumps, after a while they will start to let their yard go. They will start to think, why should I clean up my yard when he doesn't have to and he gets away with it? Idea number 10 is to have the city start to inspect areas of the city and be aware of these problems. We cannot afford to let these areas get worse and worse and only do something when someone complains. Idea number one is to increase fines and add more city ordinances 
if needed, to make people get these problems taken care of. We could also include having city crews clean these places up and putting liens on the houses so that they cannot be sold until the city gets paid for the cost of the cleanup. <coughs> Idea number 12, we now require building inspections before a house can be sold. Let's start building inspections for all homes that are being rented out and if they pass, the owner of the building gets a form. If the owner does not have one of these forms, they cannot rent out the place until the needed repairs to pass the inspection are made and make fines high enough for someone who rents without this form. We must also make renters responsible to keep yards and homes clean and notify the owner of the building when a problem occurs. We cannot hold only landlords responsible. For part of this, we could also include for landlords information on renters of other properties that have trashed homes of other landlords so that they can be protected from renting to these types of tenants. This will keep neighborhoods cleaner. Another idea is to give homeowners an incentive to spend money on their homes, especially rental properties. I know people in Sheboygan who do not want to spend any money on their homes because if they do, their taxes go up. Let's set a dollar amount, say $2,500, and if they prove that they spent this amount with paid bills to fix up their rental properties and make the place look better, their taxes on that property will not go up for at least five years. This money could be spent on painting a house, replacing old doors and broken windows, replacing a broken fence, hauling away garbage, or anything that makes the house look better to the people living around it. If you get one person to do it, others will follow. Even the school system could help. One more idea is this. Students from north and south currently build a new home each year and then sell it to get money. How about having the schools buy one or two houses each school year and repair them and then sell them? Most students in high school now will not be buying a brand new house to start with, but a fixer-upper. Again, as I was running for alderman, I saw many homes that needed porches repaired, such as rotted floors, steps replaced, windows and doors repaired, etc. The students could learn how to make these repairs and also improve the looks of homes in the city. We might even be able to get Sheboygan Christian and Sheboygan Lutheran High School students involved. More crimes occur and more drug houses are found in areas where the appearance of many of the houses implies that not many people care. These ideas will make homes look like the people do care and once it looks like people care, more people will care, and the crime rates will go down. I ask the Common Council to consider all of these ideas instead of saying, that won't work. They won't work if we don't try. I would also hope that anyone in the audience, audience here or watching on TV would also give their ideas or improvements on my ideas. I'm willing to speak to any of the committees or the committee of the whole or any city department heads about my ideas further. The more people of Sheboygan that are willing to work on these problems, the more ideas we will come up with to solve these problems and Sheboygan will be an even better place to live. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next on the list is Dimple Adams. Dimple, can you give me your home address, please? 1424 Virginia Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Okay, I promise I won't ask for more either. <laughs> uh, thank you, um, Mayor Perez and Ms. Richards and Attorney McLean and all the council for allowing me to speak again tonight. And uh, just to inform you, I am a taxpayer, Mr. Eberg. <laughs> just a joke from last time just so he understands that um, we're all taxpayers that come up here so you are hearing from us when we speak uh, I'm here tonight um, because I didn't get to finish what I started last last time uh, but I am a great supporter of the Sheboygan Police Department and I um, I think that we have a great police department and um, I think um, Chief Kirk and the other officers are doing a fine job. 
uh, it has been extremely disturbing to me to see some of the articles that have been printed in the press about the police department. And it has also been extremely disturbing to me since the last council meeting uh, with the vote to rescind uh, that I've seen the articles in the press um, that is pushing 23rd Street site. I really feel that um, we just need to remove 23rd Street, period, from um, one of your choices uh, because you need to save time. You need to move on with this. It needs to be built now. And um, if you go back and study 23rd Street again, uh, that's just going to waste more time. We've been doing this for 20 years now. And I understand it's been like 80 meetings and 49 site studies. I don't know where all these sites were, but you got it narrowed it down and you finally chose a site. Well, that got taken away last week. And um, I, I, I realized that a lot of you are all happy about that, but I'm not. And I haven't been very happy about it. I was delighted when I thought it was gonna be the site. And uh, I'm extremely disappointed because I'm not hearing the central city. Chief Kirk has repeatedly said, we need to have a central location. Well, that automatically takes 23rd Street out of the picture. Um, there, I don't know how many sites are left in the central city, but if you take and look at a city map, wards four and wards five are the central part of the city from Lake Michigan to Taylor Drive. And Sheridan Park was on the edge of Ward 4 and across the street from Ward 5. So it was centrally located. Uh, there is another um, site that's close to there that was up for discussion quite a bit earlier last year, and that's uh, the Cargill plant. So I'd like for you to consider that site. It certainly is large enough. It's 11.2 acres. I think it could do more than just have the police station there. But I think it's a site that you need to consider very seriously. And um, I was very pleased when Ms. Enders last, last week said that um, the next phase is going to include the central city to 14th Street. And then shortly after that, then it was going to include to the, to the river. So all of that would encompass putting the, the police station in that location. I thank you for your time. Um, I do have great respect for this body, and I hope that next year that all your hard work isn't um, voted out and with the new council coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much to the public for speaking tonight. We will move on. The next item is proclamation for National Police Week, May 15th through the 21st. And we also have another proclamation for Emergency Medical Services Week, May 15th through the 21st. I'd ask uh, Chief Kirk to step forward. Officer of the Mayor, City of Sheboygan, proclamation, whereas the Congress and President of the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week, and whereas the members of the Sheboygan Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the City of Sheboygan, and whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their law of their law enforcement agency and that members of our police department recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the men and women of the Sheboygan Police Department unseasonally provide a vital public service. Now therefore I, Juan Perez, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, call upon all citizens of the City of Sheboygan and upon all patriotic, civic, and educational organizations to observe the week of May 15th through the 21st, 
as Police Week with appropriate ceremonies and observances in which all our people may join in commemorating law enforcement officers, past and present, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to their communities and in so doing have established for themselves an inviolable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of our citizens. I further call upon all citizens of the city of Sheboygan to observe Sunday, May 15th, as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those law enforcement officers who through their courageous deeds have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community or who have become disabled in the performance of that duty. And let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes. In witness thereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the great city of Sheboygan to be affixed. Ms. Dimple Adams, you are truly correct. We have one of the police, best police forces ever. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Mr. Isabel, please step forward. Or your representative. This is a fun part of being a mayor. We get to recognize very deserving people. Office of the Mayor, City of Sheboygan, proclamation. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week and where access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas the emergency medical services system consists of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, police officers, educators, administrators, and others, and whereas a member of emergency medical service teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continue in education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the excellent service Orange Cross Ambulance has provided, has been providing our community, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value of the accomplishments of emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week, and I now therefore, I, Juan Perez, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 15th to the 21st as Emergency Medical Services Week. In witness thereof, I hereto have set my hand and cause it the seal of the great city of Sheboygan to be affixed on the sixth day of May in the year of our Lord, 2005. Gentlemen, lady, congratulations. And moving along, we have a mayor's report. I'd like to just say a few words to the council. The mayor's report, you will notice, it will be on your third Monday meeting of each month. I won't be doing a mayor's report every time we meet, but we will do it on the, on the third Monday of the month. And it's primarily for your benefit so that you are aware of some of the things that are happening administratively. And it's for the benefit of the community that are watching us right now so that they also can have a, a sense of what's occurring administratively in, in, uh, in city government. First, I'd like to introduce Ms. Susan Hart, who is my new mayor's administrative assistant. And as you know, I sent out an email to all the aldermen before it was announced in the paper. We've complied with all the requirements of letting all the applicants know beforehand. There were no surprises. And the process involved three people in selecting Ms. Hart, and all three people concurred. She was the best choice. And therefore, I hired Ms. Susan Hart, and I'd like to introduce you to her. Thank you so much. I'm so pleased to be here. And as the mayor said, this was kind of a fast and furious process. So I appreciate the warm welcome and the helpfulness that everyone has exhibited. Um, just like it says on the mayor's office, Mayor Juan Perez, please come in. Please come into my office. If you've got any ideas, suggestions, requests, let me know them. And if you've got any suggestions on how I can move along more quickly to learn, because I'm afraid this learning curve is going to be a bit steep. Please share that information with me also. Again, thank you so much. Thank you, Susan.
there are four things I'd like to just point out very briefly. Uh, and, but before I do that, I do want to just comment that the reception and the cooperation from our city staff with me has been just incredible. We have some very capable, competent uh, city employees, and I'm just thrilled and honored to be working with them. They have been a tremendous help. They, they demonstrate great competence and, and great knowledge in what they do, and, and that we are truly lucky to have this, this caliber of people in our, in our city. The issue has come up uh, regularly with respect to Sheridan Park are some key issues that have been brought forward by, again, Ms. Dimple Adams and, and Ms. Gina Steinhardt. And I'm very grateful uh, to these two individuals because in all this issue about whether to build a police station or not, some things kept surfacing. Some things just kept surfacing. And one of, them, one of them was the area needs to be addressed. We have an area that's, that's blighted. We have an area that tends to collect garbage. We have an area that needs a lot of serious attention. So what I have done is, is we call a meeting with Mayline. Mayline has agreed to be our partner to, to address the, the, some of that uh, garbage dumping, so to speak. And we have other key players that are going to be involved. I'm going to name some of the key players. What we're going to do is Ms. Hart and I will put together a plan that we, we will involve all these key players and then execute that plan and really dress up not only the Sheridan Park, but dress up the entire area. And I'll just briefly go down the key players and a little bit about what we, we should expect from them. The, uh, some of the key players are Sheridan Park neighborhood. They would be involved in the educational program. Involved, uh, it would involve residents and landlords. And by educational program, I mean there are certain things that we need to point out as far as making sure that, that homes are kept clean, grass is kept cut, that we don't see garbage piling up on, on, the, uh, on the porch and so forth. We have Mayline Company. They're going to, they have agreed to, to do area cleanup, maintenance, and possible fencing to prevent uh, young children and anybody else from walking down the slope into their property and throwing things and throwing garbage in, in that direction also. We have the Sheboygan Police Department who will help us putting together a patrol plan, a response plan, and possibly a security camera. And some of these things have been talked about earlier, and I'm, I'm glad they were because it just, it just confirms the need to, to do this. We also are going to be involved in our city inspection department. They will address the blight, address issues of illegal dumping, dumping of garbage, and ordinance violations in general. So they, they will, city inspections will play a key, a key role. Public Works Department, they will address issues of additional lighting. I think we've already addressed the increased wattage for some of the existing street lights. We, uh, they will work with uh, adding additional park signs as, as necessary and, uh, and putting together a maintenance plan, not necessarily just for Sheridan Park, but for all our parks. And I think there's a plan there. We just need to make sure that that plan is carried through. Friends of Sheboygan Park, they've agreed to do volunteer work participate in the educational program, fundraising, and the fix-up of the Civil War Memorial there, who it's getting a little bit broken up. So we need to make sure we take care of that Civil War Memorial. Then we have a, local, a group of local businessmen who have agreed to donate money, lots of money, for swings and other park rec recreational equipment, including picnic tables, grills, and so forth. They've also agreed to, to make contact to have someone donate the use of two trucks and a chipper which we'll, we'll be able to work with Mayline to clean up all that, all that uh, slope area. And then we have Partners for Community Development who has agreed to work with eligible neighborhood residents to assist in some home repairs and assist with the educational program also. So we have a huge number of people that are very willing to work together collectively to address an issue that has been of great concern to the community. And I think when we put this plan together and execute it, it will be just one of the most wonderful examples of that collective teamwork that, that we've talked about and we'd like to see in, uh, see in place. Next, we go to the customer service program. You'll see some signs. I think you'll see a sign on the, on the door here as you come in. Welcome to Council Chambers. It wasn't there before. As you walk in the front door, see Welcome to City Hall. It wasn't there before. We'll be addressing some of these areas that perhaps need a little bit of attention. We're also going to be redesigning our, our website. We have had a meeting with some of our staff, and all of us agreed that we probably should take a closer look at it to see if we want to do a, a little different layout, perhaps a little different color, uh, perhaps establish other links. Just everybody's coming up with some wonderful ideas, and one of the individuals that I assigned to the IS committee is a webmaster for Lakeland College who has agreed in his own individual free time to help us work with the designing of the website. 
the website is, is an incredible tool that we need to be t taking full advantage of, and it's done a great job. It, it's a good uh, website, but it doesn't hurt to update, uh, update the websites. And then the budget prioritization program, you've heard me talk about that. We will continue to hear me talk about that. That's one of the projects that Ms. Hart and I will be working on also along with the Sheridan Park Revitalization Program. And that's putting together that budget prioritization uh, program. Hopefully in th about three to four weeks we'll be able to come with something concrete and say this is what's going to happen and this is the time frame that it's going to happen in and these are some of the results as we expect to, the, the times that we expect to get some of the results. And then finally I just wanted to inform the council that I've turned in the cell phone that was previously used by the former mayor, the pager, and the van. The only time that van is going to be used by me is for long trips. I don't need a, a, a van to, to drive home. I live across the street. But I also use my, my personal vehicle to go to travel in town. I've decided to do that so there's no complications or problems in the future with respect to using the van for personal uses or using the cell phone or the pager for personal uses. So I've turned those in. I don't have access to them. And that pretty much completes my, my report. If any of you have any questions, please feel free to call my office tomorrow, and I'd be glad to talk to you in more detail about that. Thank you very much. Moving along, consent agenda. Alderman Berg. So thank you, Your Honor. I guess I'm, I'm sorry. take the time in keeping with uh, uh, former Alderman Taples uh, comments. The consent agenda, for information's sake, are routine items that typically are brought forward and can be called by individual aldermen for discussion. So usually you will hear such things as accept and file all our rows, approve and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions upon their passage. A report of officer would be a document such as City Clerk Richards would initiate from her office. A report of committee would be those items that would typically be processed by any of the standing committees and reported out and on the consent agenda. And resolutions are actions by uh, committees or the council that direct that we start doing something or stop doing something. So to repeat uh, what normally is said at this time, I would move that we accept and file all our rows, approve and adopt all our C's, and put all the resolutions upon their passage. And I'm sorry, this is 4-1 through 4-37. There's a motion and a second. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. On uh, document number 415, I would wish to abstain from the voting. And I will read that document for the public's uh, notice. It says, your committee to whom was referred this uh, document by the city clerk submitting a communication received from the, by the mayor from Pam Gottsecker requesting a donation of $500 from the mayor's international committee for the Subami Sheboygan Youth Exchange Group that will be going to Japan on July 20th and returning on August 2nd. Recommends that the report of officer be accepted, placed on file in the communication uh, from the committee, and they will also be sending the $500 donation. The reason I am abstaining from that is because of the fact I am a participant in the committee and I wish to not vote for that, or, or, I mean, just to abstain from would, it. Would you like to do a separate vote on that, Alderman Bowman? Excuse me? Would you like to do a separate vote? If, uh, only if the council wants it. Can you, well, I think we do need for abstention. Okay, so we'll call, we'll call a separate vote on that. Before we do, will Alderman Susha? Um, yes, I was wondering if we could have a separate vote on uh, 431, the recommending entry into a contract for the purchase of a motor vehicle division beach cleaner. Okay. Thank you. Let's do. What number was that? 431. Thank you. Do we do a roll call on the 415? 415 first. Roll call or not? Yes. Okay. We'll we'll take a, a roll. We'll take a vote on 415. Was there is, is there a motion to do that already or not? Um. Yes, to accept and adopt. Okay. We need to motion to accept and adopt. I'm sorry, what? We would need a motion to accept and adopt that. Right. Need a motion to accept and adopt? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on that further? If not, we'll take a roll call. Sue? Bauman? Abstain. Berg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. And Vanderweel? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. Now not ask for a motion on 431 to accept and adopt and pass the attached resolution. 
Okay, I see button popping all over the place. Alderman Bauman. This is a recommendation by Public Works to accept and uh, adopt the uh, report of committee. Is there a second? Any discussion? Alderman Susha. Um, yes, I'm just looking for some more information. What exactly does a $90,000 beach cleaner do? And what has been done in the past to perform the duties of this $90,000 machine? Alderman Bauman. If I could, Your Honor, I'd like to refer this to uh, our department head, and uh, he would take care of this for us, please. Thank you, Alderman Bauman. Mr. Holton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have a, a beach cleaner now. It's about 15 years old. It was donated by, I believe, the JCs. And it's users for picking up debris, algae, uh, driftwood, rocks, bottles, any kind of litter off the beach. And the one we have is wearing, wearing out. We have a use for We could use two. This would be a backup. This new one is a larger one, which does a better job uh, than what the current one we have. Alderman Susha. Thank you. Um, I think it's part of the job as an alderman to look at the wants and the needs of the community. And as much as I would like to say I want to buy another $90,000 beach cleaner, unfortunately it's not something I personally believe we need at this point. Um, perhaps uh, adding another uh, summer intern, perhaps for $3,000, might help clean up the beaches. Uh, they could pick up debris and uh, do that for the entire summer, probably for $3,000. So um, unfortunately at this point in time, being that I know we're going to be going into the budget session soon, um, I think that would equate to almost two public works jobs. And, and for that reason, I'm going to be voting no uh, for the beach cleaner. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Mr. Holton, any more? No, that's fine. Thank you, sir. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I got mm -hmm. one more question for you. This also cleans up the, the algae on the beach, too. Though. Yes, it does. It in the water. Yes, yes. We've got several miles of beach we need to maintain daily. Thank you. Oh, oh, hold on. Alderman Bauman. During part of the discussion in uh, committee also, we did ask, or actually it was my question, are we able to lease this to other communities for use? And the answer was yes, we could. And I guess we had done this in the past with our, our uh, former beach cleaner, the one that is now deteriorating and, and going to pot, basically. And uh, it would be added to back into the motor vehicle funding, you know, for uh, increasing the uh, uh, rental rates than for, you know, replacement of vehicles. And this is how, of course, we would maintain and retain the monies for, you know, keeping the, the use of the vehicle. Thank you, Alderman Bowman. Alderman Manny? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I've had as first district alder person uh, many calls over the years about the uh, odor that comes from the seaweed and the fish, North Point especially. Uh, simply note for our common good that this will address the issue, but not completely. And as we read our papers, we know that the issue is uh, much more serious than it used to be for reasons beyond our control. Thank you, Alderman Manny. <laughs> With this cleaner, we cannot go into the lake. It'll pick up the debris, the seaweed that's washed up on shore. We have other equipment to use, uh, end loaders or backhoe to pull the stuff out of the water, but we, it, it will pick it up once it's on the sand. Okay. We done? We are taking a vote on 431. There's a motion to accept the adopt report of committee. So please call the roll. Deberg. Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, no. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, no. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call Tom Holton to address uh, the council and the public about uh, 421 and 422, expenditure of $45,000 for a grinder. Uh, Tom's comments can help educate us as to why such a thing is necessary in our uh, treatment facility. Mr. Holton? On our, our sanitary pump station up on uh, North 3rd and North Avenue, 
We spent about a million dollars up there upsizing the pumps and uh, decreasing the probability of a backup. We have a, a power backup up there. Uh, one of the issues we're having is that wet wipes are going down the toilets and it's plugging the pumps. And what we need to do is it's a, a grinder that'll chew up those wet wipes before they hit the pumps and don't create any blockage in the pumps. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess my question is whether something thicker than a wet wipe gets in there. Is that going to wreck the it'll, it'll, it'll grind anything that'll get through the, the sewer line. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Okay. Are we done? Thank you, Mr. Holton. Okay. Alderman Sigali. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would just like to bring up a uh, 420. 4-29, I just want to tell the people of Sheboygan if they missed it, that Rockets for School was absolutely terrific. I was there on Saturday most of the day. My husband even went with me and my grandson. And it was just such a tremendous thing for these kids to be able to see these rockets go off. So if anybody missed it, I hope you come next year because it was a beautiful experience. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Singhali. Okay, we will take a vote on items 4.1 through 4.37 with the exception of 4.15 and 4.31 that have been acted on already. Sue, would you please call the roll? Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And D. Berg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 438 to be referred. Report of officers, 439. Alderman Susha. I'd like to make a motion to refer that to the Committee of the Whole. There's a motion to refer item 439 to the Committee of the Whole. And that is a motion by the city clerk submitting a communication from Susan Hundley requesting that the com Common Council consider in closed session the settlement offer that was submitted on October 18, 204 regarding the room tax litigation. Is there a second? Second. Second. Alden Berg. First, I've got to get my fuzzy together again. Nope. They can't back up. They're all fuzz on this thing. I'm on head. Can you hear me now? Okay. If this thing is going to go forward to the committee to whole, I hope that it's going to be televised on channel eight, and that it will be held in open session. That the taxpayers know what's going on here. Not not that it's going to be in closed session, because uh, this is going to reflect on the taxpayers, so I think it should be held in open session and on television. Any other comments? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I would simply like to know when we could have that committee of the whole meeting. That would be the call of the chair. There could be a request made by certain aldermen, in particular you, Alderman Sooner Manny. Sooner the better. Thursday. Okay. This week. Alderman Serta. I'm just curious as to why um, why Thursday and not the original Monday as planned. Um, it just seems that I think in fairness to letting the citizens know is it is it that we're trying to get this done before the appeal, which Susan Hunley has made very clear that she has to make um, her decision by this Friday. I think it's I think it's fair to the citizens to know why it's being pushed up to Thursday and not the original Monday. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Stefan. Uh, Your Honor, I, I'm not answering your question. I don't know why it's Thursday. I, I just wanted to let you know I do have a previously planned uh, vacation, so I'll, I'll be out of town on Thursday. Okay. Um, I guess I'd appreciate it if the council could wait. I guess, you know, I understand that, you know, legalities might prevent that. Um, I would ask that if you do it in committee of the whole, though, um, I know there's been a lot of contact. I've talked to, or not talked to, uh, had a couple emails, gone back and forth with both the, uh, 
Ms. Shusha and Ms. Hundley. I know the state, the, with the Innkeepers Association as well as the city's people, are working on legislation that I think, you know, certainly, as I mentioned to the mayor previous to the meeting, matters in what you would decide here, and those things should be, you should have knowledge of those beforehand. I won't be able to give you that knowledge, but, you know, you might want to make sure you bring the appropriate people in who can let you know what's going on, because there's other things going on at a state level that might impact any deal we would make. So I would just ask that you consider those things before we rush this through. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor, did you have a? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And thank you, um, Alderman Stefan. I will talk to you and to try to get that information, yes, and, or a person. And I do think because of the legal things happening Friday, we should try to get some information and maybe some resolution before then for all of our sakes. And there never was one planned for Monday. Thank you. Alderman Berg. Yes, thank you, and I guess I'd like to uh, counter uh, Alderman D. Berg's uh, uh, initiative to have it in an, in an open session. And I would agree that an open session is preferable. However, I'm one of, I think, several aldermen who do not have a basis in fact for making a judgment on the city's position. In order to learn of that position, I believe the only reasonable way to do that is to have a closed session so that those of us who are new, if you would, to the council would be able to hear from uh, Attorney McLean some background and, and, the, and the city's past position. I think that would allow me, at least, to make a more informed decision that we could then move to open session. Thank you. Alderman Bowen. Thank you, Your Honor. The only question I'd have would be the time of the meeting for Thursday, because we do have a regularly scheduled public works meeting. So that's the only thing that I'm wondering about. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I was also going to ask about the time, but I was also going to mention that Attorney McLean has advised us fairly well in the past when to be in open session, when to be in closed. So I think we can leave that up to him. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as older persons, we have the right that, um, just for instance, today I had contacted Steve McLean, Attorney Steve McLean, and I have met with him personally regarding this uh, matter. I've also made um, several contacts. I have um, left messages for Dee Olson. I've contacted City Planning and Development. Um, I understand why um, Alderman Berg is requesting that it's an open session because as in the past, it didn't have a reflection on the citizens' pockets books where it will now because of the money that's being asked. And I think it's important that the citizens of Sheboygan be aware of that. And I think in all fairness, we, we owe it to them. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Stefan. Um, and maybe this will help the, the, and I understand why they want to, why would it be close session, you know, obviously. And if we refer to community the whole and the community whole meets on Thursday, whether it's in closed session or open session, doesn't really matter. It's still going to come back to the council again for approval. So at that point, I mean, we would discuss it in, in, in the open, and that would be at some point in the future. Thank you. And open or closed session issues can be dealt with by majority vote. Anything else? Scott? Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. I do want to note that even though legally the appeal has to be filed by Friday, uh, until it gets in the judge's hand, the plaintiffs can choose to pull that appeal. So we don't have to have action if we chose before Friday. Uh, there is some latitude. Okay. okay, 439, there's a motion to refer to Committee of the Whole, and I vote refers it to Committee of the Whole, and they does it. Alderman Susha. Um, I'll be abstaining from this vote. Thank you. Attorney McLean. Uh, just a suggestion, uh, if you do refer to Committee of the Whole, I guess my advice is to put on a closed session item on the agenda for that meeting. Uh, if you vote not to go in a closed session, that's your prerogative, but I think that, that gives you the option to do that, and I think uh, it clearly fits within one of the exemptions of the open meeting law, which is uh, to discuss with your legal counsel strategy to be considered uh, regarding litigation, which it's involved. So I, I guess my recommendation is to have a discussion and closed session on it. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. And I vote would be to refer. 
Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Alderman Stefan, you have a um, actually, I hit it before the vote, but it doesn't matter. I just had a, just a point of information that you could give me, Attorney McLean. Um, this document, would, it doesn't really have a number on, but, but I'm assuming both of these, are they, they're on my desk, so are they both public documents now? Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, the one is issued 439, and then the other one is a, a letter from Ms. Hundley followed by a memorandum regarding a meeting that, I mean, I just want to make sure that probably takes most of the open and closed, you know, Everybody's going to know what it is if it's open session. I mean, if it's a public document, I just want to make sure that that is the, or isn't. I think there was one uh, new document to replace the attachment right. on. Okay, so that means so it is a public document then. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure what the other document was you were referring to. Well, the one was the old one that was 439. Okay. It was in our packets, and then the one was on our desk or er, er, on the top of my packet, I should say, when I opened it up. Alderman Stefan, on the original document 439, um, that communication that came in with that was their original, Susan Hunley's original submission to me. Then late on Friday, she wanted to have this new one put in in place of that, so that's why you sure. got it just in your packet. So this is yeah, 439 sorry. part of it. Okay. Alderman Montemayor, uh, Attorney McLean just asked that you perhaps consider, take a close look at the time. There may be other meetings being held at, during that particular time and day that you may have in mind. So you may want to consult with perhaps my office and ask uh, Mary Rager, is there, are there any other, or I'm sorry, City Clerk. Yeah, I know, I know there's at least two meetings, if not three, I believe, on Thursday. Okay. I'll take that all into consideration. On public works and what are the other ones? Redevelopment Authority. Redevelopment, okay. Yes, I'll check with you. Thank you very much for reminding me of that. Okay. 440 lies over. 441 lies over to June 16th. Six. Six. 442 through 455 to be referred. Resolutions introduced, 456 by Alderman Groff, authorizing retaining outside counsel to represent the city in the matter of Shelley Werner et al. versus City of Sheboygan and authorizing payment for said services. Alderman Berg. Is this going to be suspension now? Yes. Yes, I move for suspension. Any objection? Move the resolution to put the last passage. Second. 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 Under discussion. Roll call on that. Yes. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could you please tell me why you're asking for a suspension of rules on this and why this needs to be done now, if I may, please? I don't know. I don't know what this is about. Okay. I can address that, Alderman Segali. Uh, the document just before is uh, summons and complaint uh, from uh, Ms. Wainer against the city. It's on a trip and fall that the city denied the claim on and they now filed suit and they're also filing uh, a certain number of interrogatories that need to be answered within a fairly short period of time. And rather than if we wait till the next regular meeting, that's three weeks out. Uh, the outside council would have less time in which to file the answer. You only got 45 days in which to file the answer, so I'd like to uh, start that process as soon as possible. I did check with SIBMIC and uh, they, uh, uh, since you know that's our, basically our uh, insurance company, if you will, they're also recommending using Olson Cloet for uh, the defense of this claim. And we've used them successfully in the past in a number of these sorts of cases, the insurance defense type cases. 
Okay, 456, there's a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. So would you please call the roll? Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 457 by Alderman Montemayor accepting the donation of the property known as Burr Oak from Robert E. Garden Jr. family. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a real pleasure to talk about this. Um, we'll still need a vote and the resolution be put upon its passage, right? Um, the Robert Garden family has donated 35 acres to the Al city. Alderman, excuse me. Would you make a motion first and then we'll have a second? I make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Please continue. Thank you. I'll simply read this. It will explain it very well. A resolution accepting the donation of the property known as Burr Oak from the Robert E. Garton Jr. family. Whereas the Robert E. Garton Jr. family proposed to donate certain property known as Burr Oak being approximately 35 acres of exceptional, undeveloped natural land to the city of Sheboygan and, whereas the Common Council on April 18, 2005, accepted and adopted the report of the Plan Commission that proper documents be drawn accepting the donation of the Garten family property. Now therefore be it resolved that the city of Sheboygan hereby accepts the deed from the Robert E. Garten Jr. family of their property known as Burr Oak, being approximately 35 acres of exceptional undeveloped natural land according to its terms. Be it further resolved that the city of Sheboygan hereby expresses its gratitude to the Garten family for the donation of this unique parcel. This is not a park as we understand the word. It is wetland and forest. There will be trail signs and species of trees. That's it. No benches, no blacktop, no gravel. It'll be administered by Maywood as part of their education program. So I thank you, Gartens, very much. Thank you. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Alderman Montemore touched how we were going to use that land. I was just wondering if we were restricted on how we had to use it, if it had to be with the dirt trails and stuff like that. I don't know who would. Attorney McLean. Uh, the, thank you, Your Honor. The, uh, the deed is subject to some restrictions. It, it, they're going to place a conservation easement on this land. The land is not in the city. It's in the town of Sheboygan. It's, uh, I don't know how far it is from Maywood. It's some distance. It's not contiguous or even close to being contiguous. But uh, uh, it's deeded on the condition that this conservation easement is placed on the property. And as Alderman Montemayor indicated, it's, the intent is to maintain the property in its natural state. I think there is, as I recall reading the uh, conservation easement, there's one area that I think you can put in a parking lot of, not to see 10 vehicles for parking or something. Uh, the, uh, the conservation easement will be monitored by the, uh, I'm not sure what they're called, the Glacial Lakes uh, Conservation Trust, I believe, uh, or Land Trust. Uh, so it's, the, the city would not be able to use it for other purposes. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you again, Your Honor. When this was first talked about at Maywood, David, Cookup was so very excited. The varieties of trees, and he said there may even be lady slippers and jack in the pulpits and that sort of thing. He was very excited to have this. Okay. So would you please call the roll? Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Serta, Aye. and Davis. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 458 to 460 lies over. Or 
61, 462 to be referred. Report of committee by law and license, licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 6747 based on the applicant's non-cooperation with the committee and her failure to report all charges on her application. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I have talked to the applicant. Uh, she said that she was sick and could not make the last meeting. And therefore, I would like to honor her request that this be referred to committee for uh, her attendance at the next l, &L meeting. There's a motion to refer to the back to committee. And there's a second under discussion. If not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of committee. 8464 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of, of appropriations in the 205 budget. Resolution number 260506 260506 oh, 26, oh, by Alderman Groff authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Stefan. Uh, yes, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage and it be accepted and adopted. There's a motion to accept and adopt and the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Under discussion? Not. Call roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 465, 466 lies over. 467 to be referred. Matters laid over. 328, resolution number 110506 by Alderman Groff amending the composition of the Mayor's International Committee to decrease the membership from 16 to 9. Alderman Bowman. I thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. A motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Could I just have some explanation of why uh, we're reducing the, the members? Do you want me to do it? Alderman Bowen. Again, thank you, Your Honor. Um, when I was called by you yourself, uh, Your Honor, you did ask me <coughs> if the numbers on committee was good. And I said, well, Again, this is your decision, it's your committee. And you had asked then if, you know, like you said, 16 was too many or enough, or did you think it should be reduced? I said again, it was your uh, responsibility, basically, and if you wish to do so, do so. And this is where the numbers came down to nine from 16. But you're comfortable with the re yes. reduction? Good. Uh, any other questions? Okay, we have a motion that, uh, to put the resolution upon its passage. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 329, resolution number 120506 by Alderman Groff, abolishing the Special Public Projects Committee. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Not. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 336, General Ordinance Number 10506 by Alderman Bauman, amending Section 29.3, Subsection B3 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code to update the reference to the Marina Committee, to the Marina and Harbor Committee. Alderman Bauman. Again, thank you, Your Honor. This is a uh, general ordinance, as you just had said. It's simply a name change, and I'd move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Not so, please call roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Manny. Aye. 
15 ayes. Motion carries. 337, General Ordinance Number 20506 by Alderman Groff, repealing Division 11 of the Artic of Article 5 of Chapter 2 of the, of the Municipal Code relating to the Efficient Regional Government Opportunities Commission. Alderman. Yes, thank you. Alderman Berg. I request that the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Segali. Thank you, Your Honor. Now I can ask. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. I, I would just like an explanation as to why you're repealing this. I thought that this was going to be a, a good commission that they were hopefully going to save $5 million in five years. And I guess some of the citizens of our city also were thinking, hey, maybe this is such a bad idea. Now all of a sudden we're going to repeal it. And I would like to know, I guess, and as well as them, as to why this is going to be repealed. Sure. The, the, the logic, the rationale behind is Alderman Segali is we already have, uh, as, as you're aware, the um, City County Shared Services Committee right now. There's people, uh, the composition of that committee is comprised of people from the county and people from the city. That committee is charged with, with doing things that the Ergo Commission was supposedly to do. And as you said, the key word is hopefully save five million dollars. There was never any spe specificity with respect to how that committee if at all, was going to save five million dollars in five years. The the other uh, part of the rationale is that the Chamber of Commerce and the county hold uh, frequent meetings that involve discussion of shared services. Now, the previous administration did not attend a lot, a lot of those meetings. I intend to attend a lot of those meetings myself, and we will be able to coordinate and communicate openly with the, the uh, City County Shared Services Committee and that particular committee that the county and the Chamber of Commerce have. All this issue of shared service is not going to be lost by dissolving ergo. I guarantee you that because I am a great believer in shared services and costs myself. So whatever that ergo committee uh, was going to address will not be left uh, behind. It will, all these issues will be addressed. It just creates another level of bureaucracy that quite frankly overlaps and duplicates what's already being done and there really is no need to have that. Okay, we've got Alderman Montemayor. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you've said it. You've said everything I was going to say about the duplication and the um, city county shared service committee that we have in place that we're working with very hard. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you've answered my question too. I had wanted to ask how this was this ergo committee was going to save this five million in five years because I wasn't clear on that. But thank you. Alderman Stephan. Uh, yes, uh, based on your answers, I'm going to support repealing this. And I guess I would just ask, knowing the history, and, and that we're only one entity on the Shared Services Committee, you know, obviously it's with the county, but the problem I always had with that committee was they always met quarterly at best. So maybe you could use your influence to see if they could meet more frequently, and then hopefully to get more accomplished, I guess. And out of those committee, out of those meetings, there will be a lot of other incidental meetings that will occur because of that. Right. But I, I guarantee you, we will be we will be meeting. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Uh, thank you, and I guess that also addresses my concern. And if that committee would feel that they needed to broaden their base and bring in uh, extra parties and uh, include other entities, would you be receptive if that recommendation came from that shared services committee to broadening that? Absolutely. Thank you. Alderman Segali. Thank you again, Your Honor. Have you ever had the pleasure of attending that uh, county and, and city committee that you were speaking of? Yes. Okay, because I have too, and I, th I just thought just being in that one meeting at that time, the county was very condescending to the city people that were there. So I hope you can change that um, if, you, if, if you're there because they got, they got everything through their way and the city just kind of sat there and they didn't really have a say in it and I didn't like to see that happen. Thank you for your, for your advice. I guarantee you we will not be giving into anything. Okay. My first uh, concern is to represent the city very effectively. Okay. We have Alderman Manorville. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I realize that it's possible or that there's duplicative services basically, but some don't meet at certain times and sometimes they don't meet at all. And I think the Ergo Commission is another tool that we could save money and I think that we shouldn't 
throw it away at this time. Thank you. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I presume, as we deal with a very significant issue related to shared services, the ambulance service, that that will call for a special joint committee and it will not be dealt with with the current established committee, correct? Correct. We need to do that before too long. Okay. Thank you. Attorney McLean. Uh, Alderman Manny, there is a, a joint committee, a, a quality assurance ambulance committee that does meet, I think, uh, on a quarterly basis currently on the ambulance issue, you know, not for renegotiating the contract, but for going over ambulance issues. Thank you, Attorney McLean. And again, just as a final note, the important thing is that we don't go around creating committees just because we want to create committees. We need to make sure that they're focused, that, they're, that they have uh, specificity, that, that they have the correct people and the correct number of people <coughs> in, the, in the membership. And in this case, it's just my strong feeling that that particular commission just duplicates what other committees are already doing and can do and can broaden their, their, their scope to do. So it's just another level of bureaucracy that, that we can put aside and, and move forward with the sharing uh, services and cost. Okay. Please call the roll. Uh, you, uh, you know the vote is an aye is to repeal. Okay. Uh, Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Ten to five. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 468, an RO by the Board of Electrical Examiners submitting licenses that have been issued. Alderman Berg. I guess, could I also take uh, 469? Okay. And I move that uh, uh, both ROs be accepted and placed on file. Second. There's a motion in the second. Under discussion? Not all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 470, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Sheboygan Police Department notifying the council of grant program monies applied for to use to par partially fund the purchase of a fingerprint scanning archive transmittal network for the law enforcement agencies located in Sheboygan County. Alderman Berg. Oh, sorry. Better, uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Uh, report of officer be accepted and filed. Okay, me. There's, there's a motion to accept report of officer and there's a second under discussion. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you think we could have Chief Kirk just talk a little bit about this so that people would understand just what this is all entailing? Yes, ma'am, that would be just fine. Chief Kirk. Thank you, sir. Sure. Mr. Mayor and Common Council, the, um, the purpose of this is uh, Detective Glenn Fisher is in charge of fingerprint uh, uh, processing and mailing these fingerprints for uh, those persons arrested to the state. Years ago, these would be done on a fingerprint card. We would roll them and then we would send each and every card. We'd make multiple cards and send a copy of those cards to the state. Uh, back in 1999, we received grant money for a card scan. The card scan, what we do is you fingerprint, you roll the fingerprints on a card, fingerprint card, you then scan it into the computer, and then you shoot it off to the state of Wisconsin. Now the state of Wisconsin, the Department of uh, Crime, uh, Crime Information Bureau, says that these fingerprints must be digitized. Uh, therefore, with the card scan, which we received in 1999, is uh, pretty much met its, uh, its course. Uh, there are no longer any parts, and in December of this year, the uh, company who provided us that uh, machine says they will no longer provide parts for that, or if it needs to be repaired, if there's parts to repair it, they would charge us per hour to fix it. Uh, we then uh, talked to uh, different agencies in Sheboygan County. Uh, grant money was available through the Department of Justice to burn grant money, uh, and that money uh, was about $18,000 that we could use to partially purchase a live scan 
uh, fingerprint uh, monitor, which a live scan is. You, you, you roll those fingerprints right on a computer. Uh, it'll tell you whether or not you have a good print, and then boom, immediately it's sent by computer down to the state of Wisconsin. Uh, this is basically a joint effort with the uh, county law enforcement agencies where in fact there was some money available and we were chosen as the agency to get this up and running because Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department already has a live scan, we do not. And uh, this would be to partially fund the purchase of that item. Also would be used to uh, interface uh, with the computer system. Um, uh, Detective Glenn Fisher indicates that this should be the majority of the money needed to get this up and running. So that is why uh, we have sent this because it's a requirement of the grant application that this uh, unit is notified. Thank you. I believe we have a question, Chief. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a quick question, this Chief. Is this going to involve all law enforcement agencies in the county, like Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls, Kohler, Alcarle, and the Sheriff's Department, as well as the city? Yes, they, the uh, joint effort initially, the, the Sheriff's Department already has a live scan. We do not. So uh, in working with this committee, Detective Fisher uh, assures me that we were chosen as the second agency. And then down the road, every other agency will hopefully uh, through grant purchase uh, their own unit. <coughs> Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I've also uh, talked to uh, Detective Fisher a little bit about this uh, late last week. and. Uh, you know, this is another example of the county is making the application uh, formally uh, on our behalf, basically. And part of the, the rationale that the feds have for granting the money is that this be kind of networked in countywide with all the law enforcement agencies in the county. So it's, it's, uh, it's another good example of shared services, frankly. Wonderful. Thank you, Chief Kirscher. We have a motion to accept and file 470. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 471, an RO by the city clerk submitted a notice of claim and claim in the matter of Jody T. Armstrong versus the city of Sheboygan. That will go to Special Committee on Risk Management. Attorney McLean, other matters? 472 is a memorandum from Eastern Shores Library System regarding the public hearing on the plan for county library services in Boyden County, 2006 to 2010. And that will go to finance. 473 is a narrow by the city clerk submitting an amended summons and complaint in the matter of Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority versus Kao Yang et al. And that will be referred to risk management. 474 is communication from charter communications stating that they will be providing customers with an annual notice, including information and products and services available, and a notice with some slight price adjustments to the installation charges and unreturned equipment fees. That will be referred to finance. 475 is a communication from Robert Meyer regarding problems with the parking in his alley and requesting no parking so that he is able to get into his garage without being blocked by vehicles parking there for a long period of time. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 476 is a resolution relating to the city contract with the Chamber of Commerce relating to the That will go to Committee of the Whole, I believe. Motion to adjourn. So a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. Thank you and good evening.